Hey, hey guys, it's Z from Build the Business You Love. And thanks so much for joining, guys. For those of you who are uh, currently on the webinar right now, and for those who will be watching this video in the future, thanks so much for joining and thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, for those of you who know, um, I am actually a four time event space owner as well as a, an event space, excuse me, an event furniture rental business owner. And I am now teaching people how to open up event spaces and start businesses. And uh, I just want to do this quick webinar just to go over what goes into starting an event space. A lot of people just kind of want to figure out where to start, what they need, kind of find out, you know, what's possible, right? If it's within their scope of their character, and their personality if it's something that they can actually do, right? So this is why I'm doing this video. Um, full disclaimer here, there will be an offer at the, toward the end of the video that goes into uh, information about my course, which is very affordable. And uh, so you can listen out for that as well. Okay, so now we're gonna get started. All right, so let's get started here. I'm gonna move my big head out the way. <laughs> so what goes into event space ownership? So basically, right, uh, if you are confused, you don't know where to start, you wanna figure out uh, some information about the good, the bad, the ugly. Um, you know, I also have a bunch of YouTube videos on YouTube under uh, Build the Business You Love. You can also check those out. Um, but this is what we kind of gonna go into uh, what's required, what's necessary. And so you can kind of figure out how you feel about that, right? By the way, guys, this is not any type of professional advice. This is for informational purposes only and should not be substituted for, you know, you going to get a, um, I don't know, an attorney or a tax person. Make sure that you get the proper advice that you need to get for you, okay? So let's start by talking about uh, the basics, right? What you need to start an event space. Um, I basically created this in a check a checklist style format, so you can kind of go over it or write down notes or just even go over the concepts in your head to see, you know, if it's something that you can actually do, right? So if the first thing you need to do is ask yourself: Is your event space idea feasible? First of all, I've seen people who have these crazy ambitious ideas, which is wonderful. But to start off, they never really have the resources to do what's in their head. So I want you to be able to meet yourself where you are financially, physically, uh, you know, mentally. Make sure that you're able to meet yourself where you are. Ask yourself, you know, is it something that's feasible? Um, you know, some people come to me and they're like, oh, I want to have a a huge event space with water access and it's remote and all this other stuff. And sometimes, you know, right now within the capabilities that you can do, these things may not be feasible. So I want you to ask yourself, is your idea actually feasible? Is this something that you can get, right? Um, you have to ask yourself some really tough questions and be realistic with yourself, right? Don't lie to yourself, okay? Um you have to ask yourself questions like, do you have the ability to deal with customers? And the event space world, you're face to face with them sometimes uh, if you decide to do it that way. Uh, sometimes you're over the phone with them or you're contacting them uh, via email or a text message or DM. So you wanna ask yourself, you know, are you good with working with customers or do you get frustrated very easily? Um, do you have patience with yourself uh, to start up a, a business process and, and are you able to work with customers? And what will you really focus on when you do start your business? Will you focus on mostly baby showers or weddings? Like what would be your niche, right? Uh, that's a good place to start when you're starting to define your target market and determining who you're gonna actually serve. Some people just focus on baby showers. Some people do a combination of both. Some venues are strictly wedding venues, right? So you really would have to decide what's good for you. Uh, some of the things that, you know, based on what you like to do, right? Um, 
Next, you want to consider what's the legal structure of your business. Uh, if you want to do like an LLC, if you want to do an S corp, and there are uh, parameters behind all of those things, right? Consider your your taxes, your personal liability. Um, also, you should also consider the location. Location is so important when it comes to event space ownership because you want to be you. you want to be where everyone else is. You want to be visible. You want to make sure that, you know, it's in a location where people can actually go to and people will want to have their event in, right? Their baby shower, their bridal shower, whatever it is. You want to make sure that it's it's, it's something that they can get to, right? Um, what do you need to make it marketable? You should have a market plan, right? You should have um, a plan to understand how you're going to get your name out there? How you're going to market your business? There are a bunch of different uh, goodness platforms. The social media platforms are huge to do this on your Instagrams, your TikToks, and then you have your ads for each platform, right? And then you should also just kind of develop a marketing plan. It goes within your business plan. So this way you're able to determine is this something that I can do, right? You should be looking at these things before you even start to look at a space. Um, how you're going to market your business is going to be a very important part of your business ownership. Um, have you created a list of spaces you, that you have in mind? It's often, a lot of times people say, oh, well, just walk up to the space and see if it's you know a good size. But it's so much more that goes into it. That particular location may not be able, you may not be able to have an event space there, right? It may not be zoned for that. And we'll get into that a little bit later. Um, have you gotten estimates for repairs and for uh, to change structures if that something that you have to do once you found the space. So if say, if you, for example, if you've seen the space and you're like, yeah, I love this space, but it needs so much work. You have to figure out the cost estimates for that work that needs to be done. And if it makes sense to actually do versus getting something that's a little bit, you know, I guess more ready and ready to just uh, uh, plug and play, right? Something that's already, uh, you can just start the business opposed to something that you have to, you know, do the floors, um, fix the walls, fix the, the ceilings, put in ceiling tiles, help with the electric. All of those things can get costly. But on the flip side, you may get a better deal as far as um, when it comes to renting, right? Um, so we went over the estimates. Uh, is the target market right for you, right? Once you've gotten all of the, your thought process through and you've gone over the things that you want to go through and you have to ask yourself, all right, does it really make sense to market to a bridal shower or bri uh, brides and grooms to a wedding, a wedding party for a smaller event space? So you have to reevaluate that question and continue to ask these questions to yourself over and over again because those things may change throughout your process. Will you be leasing or buying? <laughs> some people, most people opt to lease, but some people do buy. So um, that's an option that you can actually take advantage of. You know, if you have the credit, the funds, the resources, you can actually speak to the people in the back of the bank and see what your options are. How much square footage you'll need? Um, what's the price range for your space? Uh, these are all questions that you would also need to ask yourself once you start looking for spaces. Now, I'll be the first one to tell you that uh, once you start looking for spaces, as far you have to consider the zoning and you should always do a zoning assessment and make sure that your business, your event space business can actually be there. Some zones in within your county, within your city may not allow for an event space to be in that particular area. And there are uh, workarounds for the, that uh, particular situation, for that particular problem. But, you know, they can be costly and they can be time, uh, a lot of time that goes into it. So, you know, these are things that you should look into when you are looking for a space. Is it even zoned for, uh, for something like this? Or can I get it zoned for an event space? Or is it just zoned for retail? or office space, right? So these are things that you need to look at. The CFO, does, uh, will the CFO change once I um, change the zoning? Just because the CFO may say 150 now, 
if you were to change the zoning to assembly and changing your per permitting process to assembly, it can change your CFO, your people, the amount of people that's allowed within uh, that particular uh, office space or that particular commercial property, that amount of people can change. So you need to make sure that you're asking the correct questions so that you're not getting into something and figuring out later that you can't have there what you need to have. I know several people who have come to me afterwards and like, oh, they changed the CFO and now I can only allow, you know, less 50 people or less. So now it's considered a small event space, even though the space is actually large. They base a lot of things on bathrooms, on parking spaces, on the actual size of the space. On, there's a, a bunch of factors and variables that uh, these inspectors, city and uh, county officials use to make sure that people are safe. And within these parameters, you know, you need to know what's the proper questions to ask to make sure that you have the right answer so you don't get into something and then later find out you can't have the right amount of people that accom accommodate your specific target market. Okay. Um, the next question is, what will you buy to make your space marketable? Um, will you have a more modern space? Will you have a more rustic space? And you have to start to think about these things to make yourself uh, open to new ideas, right? And now with this, you can start to once you've um, had an idea of what, you, what direction you're going into, you can start to start pricing things to make your space look the way that you want to look it to look based on that target market. Okay, um, what's your capital expenses, your capex, and what's your operational expenses, your opex? So your capital expenses are like your larger expenses, the things that you basically have to pay for one time. Maybe your real um, your uh, real estate fees um, that that can be significant, right? Um, if you're buying a building, maybe it'll be your um, it'll be your down payment. So these are things that you pretty much have to pay for uh, just one time, but these can be larger things. Or if you have some sort of equipment um, that you pay for just once, right? That's your capital expenses. Whereas your uh, OPEX, your operational expenditures are your expenses that you get on an operational basis, on a month to month basis, a week to week basis. And these are things like your lights, your rent, um, if you have to pay for um, any type of, well, you will have to pay for insurance, right? So these are your operational expenses. And these are things that you would want to kind of put into your uh, business plan to make sure that you have a budget. You want to create a good budget uh, to make sure that, again, this is something that you can do. It's feasible and it makes sense. That's the whole point of this, right? It has to make sense. Um, we went over how would you market your event space? Uh, do you have an event space business plan? Do you want to, you know, when you're doing your your uh, business plan, you want to make sure that you ask yourself the right questions. And often enough, um, uh, a business plan can actually help you to sort of navigate the process. And don't think of a business plan as something that's stuck once you create it. No, a business plan is something that is a, a living, breathing thing. And a lot of people just create business plans because they have to give it to investors. They have to give it to banks because they're looking for loans or extra funding, right? And that would be the purpose of your business plan besides actually having a direction on what you need to move into. But it's a living, breathing document. You can actually change it as you go, okay? It's not set in stone. If you decide, hey, I, I just thought it was gonna be a wedding venue, but now, um, you know, we decided that the, the we don't have the proper kitchen for to provide the food. So now um, maybe instead of a wedding venue, this will be more appealing to uh, the baby shower crowd, you know? So it just... It just has the the business plan allows you to make sense of it all. It kind of pulls everything together. And as we all know, writing things down makes things a lot clearer. And once you have your business plan, your financial plan, your marketing plan in, it's going to present itself as a much clearer picture. Think of it as a uh, at first everything is jumbled up. It's a huge mess. Right. But once you have your um, if you decide to do a business plan, once you have your business plan, your marketing plan, your financial plan, everything is kind of laid out for you. Um, do you have what it takes to own a business? Some people want to go into business <laughs> 
and they don't really have what it takes, right? They're kind of confused. They don't, they don't know where to start from it. And it, it can kind of be scary. And with that, I wanted to introduce you guys to my affordable course. It is uh, the Ultimate Event Space course. And within this course, we go over all the questions that you have, that, that all the questions that you were going down YouTube at three in the morning, asking yourself questions that you were researching on Google, uh, questions that you were asking event space owners were scared to. All of these questions are answered in this course. Um, topics covered are funding and business credit. So in case if you need extra funding, how, how to go about that and what it is, right? How to make your space visible and uh, market marketing strategies for your event space business. Demystifying, zoning and CFO because a lot of people don't understand what exactly that is and what goes into that. Automations process. If you decide, hey, I just want this space to be completely automated. I want a hands-off um, system in place. I have the automations and teach you how to do that. Um, a whole section on contracts and what should be in your contracts and what's important and what's not important. Um, how to manage your space, how to operate your space. And I'm talking about on a day to day from Monday to Sunday, I break it down for you on what is actually, what should go into the day to day operations. There's also a Canva mini course, which teaches you how to, um, basically create some of the beautiful templates and some of the, um, the, uh, marketing things that should go out for your, uh, social media and for your uh, ads. And also AI and business is also in this course. And right now, this course is very affordable at only $97, okay? And it also comes with um, a Facebook group that you can ask people questions, ask people with like minds, ask people who are invested in their business and want to move forward in this. And you guys can kind of communicate with that. So that's what's included in this course, and it's only $97. So I'm going to continue on, uh, but know that this is an option and I'll give you information on how to go about getting uh, the course, okay, later on. Moving big head out the way again. All right, so um, this next part is about you. This isn't about the business. This just is about you because you have to ask yourself, is this for me? Ideally, you don't want to spend, you know, a lot of money trying to figure that out. Okay. So uh, you want to spend your money on the actual business, right? You don't want to spend your money trying to figure out what's the right thing to do. So in doing this, you have to ask yourself questions, like questions like, um, how will I set my business up correctly? Um, uh, you have to ask yourself questions like, you know, how, how can I go about doing and are you able to actually, you know, overcome a lot of the things that goes into business? So some of the questions can look like, you know, how are you at business? How do you, do you have the confidence and the optimism, optimism um, about, uh, you know, overcoming obstacles? Can you say no? Because in a lot of, listen, people will try you. They'll try you. They'll ask you all kind of crazy stuff. Can you bring a horse into the event space, you know, for their kid's birthday party, you have to be able to say no. Okay. And if you're not a person to say no, then your partner or someone who's helping you has to be able to say no. Um, do you like being in charge? Some people don't like to be in charge, actually. Some people like to actually, you know, take the this, this, this side step. Some people don't like to be the one to go to if you have questions, right? Um, What's the next question? Am I able to function in an environment of uncertainty? Business is uncertain, uncertain, uncertain. You don't know what's going to happen the next day, okay? Especially in this business. So, um if you like, if you are a person who likes, you know, structure, then you would either have to provide structure in your business and be able to, um, to, cause I, for one, I need structure. I can't just go willy nilly. I have to have things in place and I have to have it done the right way. Otherwise it's, you know, in my head, it's just a mess. So, if you're like that, then you have to provide different systems and different ways to make that possible. Uh, what else do we have here? Am I able to motivate and inspire people? Forget about people. 
are you able to motivate and inspire yourself? Because when you have your own business, it's just you. It's just you, okay? It's just you saying, hey, can I do this? I could do this. You got to be pumping yourself up every day. I got to do this. I have to make this money. I have to do these ads. I have to put myself out there. And it's you. So you have to ask yourself, uh, can I motivate myself on a day-to-day basis? And you're going to have your days. You're going to have your days. But it's important to be able to pick yourself back up, right? Are you an effective salesperson? Are you a fair negotiator? If you know that you're not a fair person, if you cheat in Monopoly every time you play, <laughs> if you're cheating at spades, if you're cheating at, if you're not a fair person, that maybe that's something that you need to work on before you start to you start your event space business. Um, do I understand uh, my own limitations and know when uh, I need to ask for help? That was a hard thing for me because I didn't like to ask for help. I like to figure stuff out on my own. That can be a good thing. That can be a bad thing. Life is about balance. And that's what I learned. Uh, and that's something that you should uh, you should also have a characteristic balance. Because there are going to be times where, yeah, you need to do everything on your own. And there's going to be times when you're going to start to have to delegate. You're going to have to start to delegate those little tasks, the tasks that um, the, the hourly tasks, you know, the sweeping and mopping. You know, at first you should absolutely do the sweeping and mopping. At first you should absolutely be opening and closing because you have to know what goes into it to be able to make changes and be able to grow, right? Um, What else? Am I willing to devote whatever time and energy that's needed to be successful? You got to be waking up, ready to go, okay? You have to be dreaming, sleeping, eating your business because that's just what it is as an entrepreneur. Um, is the risk of my financial assets worth, uh, the expected rewards? Business is a risky thing. So you have to make sure that you're putting every effort in, you're getting all the knowledge that you can get so that you are able to make the best decisions possible because it can be very risky. Sometimes it's just the luck of the draw. Sometimes, well, I don't believe in luck, but sometimes, you know, you have God on your side and he's like, yeah, this is for you. Sometimes it's like, wait, hold on. <laughs> so you have to make sure that, you know, uh, you are taking the right risk. You're making the right decision for your business and it makes sense for you financially. Um, do you have a history of, uh, of success at things to which you are committed to? Um, do you have a strong support system with family and friends? Now this one, you're going to have those people that's going to say, yeah, I'm going to be there. I'm going to push a broom. I'm going to be there. I'm going to do all the stuff that you need to do when you open girl or man, I'm, I'm going to help you all. I'm going to help you out. Don't worry. I'm going to do security. I'm going to be there. Do day you open. A lot of people don't have anyone there to be found. Okay, business, as they say, is a very lonely place, especially a, a small business. So, yeah, if we, I'm gonna just leave it at that. You, you, you rely on who you know you can rely on. Let me make myself smaller again. Okay. Now, about your business setup, you want to make sure that your business is set up correctly. You want to make sure that you have, you know, your LLC. You want to make sure that once you hit a certain amount that you go into an S-Corp. You want to make sure that you have your structure set up. You're, and you're structuring your business for funding. You're positioning it, positioning it for funding. And you want to make sure that your legal forms and your, your setup is done properly. Make sure you have your EIN. By the way, you can just go to um, the IRS website and look up the SSS SS-4 form to complete your um, EIN number, if that's what you want to do. Um, have you looked up your name to make sure it's not taken? Have you looked up your, you know, your in your state to make sure your your name that you are interested isn't taken, is, isn't registered as a fictitious name or um, isn't registered as an LLC already? Um you have to do just do all of these little steps just to make sure that you're able to get the things that you need to get when you get when you need them. If you you know need business credit, if you need to get a business net thirty accounts, if you need to get business credit cards, you want to set up your your business and set it up properly and position it for funding. 
And finally, you want to ask yourself who you have in your corner. Who is it? Who's a professional? Who is your team? Do you have a mentor? I would love to be your mentor, but ask yourself, do you have a mentor? Do you have an accountant for your taxes? Do you have an insurance person? Do you, who's your banker? By the way, you need to be building a relationship with your banker. You need to know who your banker is. When you go in here, don't just, oh, hi and bye. How you doing? How's your son? Yeah. So that way, when it's time to, to pull their coattail to the side and say, hey, who I need to speak to uh, for a business loan? Tell me what, what goes into it. And maybe they'll give you a little tidbit on the side. You know what I mean? Or maybe they'll give you some information that they perhaps would not have. Relationships are very, very important in business. Also, you may want to have a lawyer on, on hand or at least someone to, who can look over your contracts. Okay. Someone who can look over all your, the things you have going on. Um, that is pretty much it guys. And basically I want to let you know that you can also go, I have a bunch of free guides and downloads at build the business, you love.com build the business, the letter you love.com. And of course I have my course right here under courses. Um, I have that course that I previously mentioned that you can take advantage of for only $97. So you can check that out. Uh, do I have another slide here? I do not. So again, I'm Z from Build the Business You Love. I hope this helps someone. And uh, if this helps you, then great. If not, then go get that course. If you need some more, like, you know, someone to kind of hold your hand electronically, then make sure you go get that course. All right, go check it out. Build the Business, the letter you love .com. I'm Z, and I hope this helps you out. And take care, guys. I appreciate you watching this far. Later.